As some of you may know, I am a retro enthusiast uh, who has his origin for PC retro gaming somewhere between 92 towards 2005. And uh, I have been collecting uh, old scrap laptops to um, remember those feelings from the good old days. I found this Compaq M2000 Presario retro laptop. It is no beast, it's quite heavy. Some back history. Last year, summer, um, I went to the local scrapyard to dump away some crap and I found two laptops. This is the Compaq M2000 Presario and another laptop which I used for a uh, video uh, which was for junk heap scraps purposes. That laptop was too expensive to repair and the Compaq Presario M2000, which is the correct name, is pretty easy to give new life to. The costs are very low to restore this laptop, um, but it takes some time and some very exotic parts to get it started. What I like about this laptop is that it's very sturdy, it's very heavy. I don't like the top cover though, the, uh, the black cover. It stands a bit odd between the, uh, the silver lining and the rest of the laptop itself, which is just silver and it scratches that much easily the, the, the top. I do like how the laptop opens. You push in the button, you click it and the lid goes open. Now the screen is very glossy. It's, um, I think it's a TN panel, but it's very glossy. I do like it because the IBM ThinkPad I have, the R60 is just flat and the colors aren't that much pretty on it. It's not actually a gaming laptop, the R60. And this is more of a multimedia laptop. It shows because uh, it has Alltech Lansing speakers and speakers on the front. It has a more dedicated GPU with 128 megabyte because I remember the good old days where I had my Voodoo 2 16 megabyte graphic card. So this is a huge step forward. The laptop itself looks really, really good. It's in really good shape. Uh, I think it was owned by some old people. It looks like an old people laptop. No scratches at all. Keys look very clean. I like like how the touchpad is it's very like it's never been touched really the buttons still feel clicky even the original stickers are here present there's even the Wi-Fi certified sticker by Compaq which is now HP Compaq does not exist anymore uh, it's still here it's a bit damaged correct me if I'm wrong PCI am I something three slot you just click the button in pull out the card slot holder which is the original Compaq card holder there's an Ethernet connection two USB ports VGA input for your maximum resolution resolution of 1024 by 768. There is a DVD drive. If you look at the bottom of the laptop, there are a lot of expansion bays which the user can just self manual the components. Now the battery looks fine as well. It's a bit stuck. I think it's never been replaced. So I'm removing it here with a screwdriver. The fan still looks great. It has no dust inside of it. The DVD drive can be removed with one screw. It is possible to replace it for another DVD drive. It does have another connection that I'm used to. I'm used to the SATA connectors and I think this is one of the PATA connectors or something uh, which is quite an exotic thing. I immediately checked what kind of hard drive went inside. Well it did not have a hard drive but it made it difficult for me because when you open the lid you can see that it does not take a EDE drive or a SATA drive. It has a different kind of connector which I eventually found out is a PATA connector. I think it's older or a successor to IDE for laptop and I had to order some exotic parts, exquisite parts from uh, the internet. For starters, I had to order a uh, SATA to PATA hard drive. What this thing does is it takes a SATA hard drive and this is an exceptional part. It is not a normal SATA hard drive. It is a small variant of it, which you stick into the PATA hard drive. The PATA to SATA converter takes a special hard drive, which looks like an M2 SSD card slot. I found a 32 gigs hard drive, which you put into the PATA to SATA SATA connector hard drive. Afterwards, if you look, it still won't connect to the connector inside the laptop. It has different kind of pins, a PATA connector to insert into the laptop, which took about two months to arrive. So that's why this video is pretty late. So when you place in the connector to the PATA hard drive and place the PATA hard drive inside the laptop, it finally works. So let's boot up the computer and see 
what those specs are. As you can see, it says Presario M2000, which is the model number, and it's a mobile AMD Sampron processor. It runs an 1800 MHz laptop came installed with 768 megabytes of RAM. You can expand it, I don't know to which volume, but I reckon two to three gigabytes. There isn't much anything exciting inside the BIOS. Video memory is accessible to 32 to 128 megabytes. I have no idea why you wanna lower that volume because 120 megabytes is uh, quite sufficient for the games should be running. So go exit, save changes, and there we go. Here's the thing, I'm going to install Windows XP Service Pack 3 on this laptop. But I won't show you the full install of Windows XP because that's very boring. And uh, on this not so fast SSD M2 slot, whatever it is, it still installs very slowly. If you use a regular SSD, like with a SATA connector, the installation is a bit shorter, very short, like a few minutes. But this is not a true SSD and it has no SATA connection. This is very slow. So I'm going to speed up some segments because installing Windows Windows XP is pretty boring. So there you have it, the Windows XP boot screen. Help protect your PC. No, not right now because I'm not connected to the internet. Checking your internet connectivity. I won't register with Microsoft. There's no use case for uh, this laptop. Again, we'll use this computer. It's fist from bros. Thank you, no thank you. Normally when you boot up Windows XP, you'll hear welcome sound. But uh, with this laptop and Windows XP itself, you get is almost every time you don't have the correct drivers. So this laptop comes with no sound in the beginning as you can see it recognizes the 32 gig uh, mini ssd or flash card whatever you want to call it so here's the problem with windows xp in my opinion uh, these days you have to find the correct drivers for the laptop or the computer you're installing and i found some drivers on a site for all the uh, components in this laptop and i don't even think they're all correct but i downloaded them all and put them on this usb stick and it's recognizing the usb stick as the core source Survivor 3.0. So the problem was it recognizes the USB stick, but it's formatted not in the correct way. I think it's NTFS formatted and it needs to be formatted in FAT32. So what I had to do is grab my other laptop, remove the files from the USB stick, format it in FAT32, put those files back on the USB stick, and then insert the USB stick back again into this retro laptop. And here's another thing that I really, really hate about getting drivers for Windows XP is that all the file names for the drivers are not correct as they should. If you're downloading an audio driver, name it like compact underscore M2000 audio driver, whatever. Just don't call it like things like SP310607. So what I wanted to do is with the R60, I had installed Windows XP and it ran SWAT 2 fine. SWAT 2 is one of my favorite, all time favorite games. I had to reinstall the R60 with Windows 7. Now I grabbed the GOG version of Police Quest SWAT 1 and 2 and you'll see eventually that this doesn't work at all, but somehow the GOG G version and the Steam version of Police Cast SWAT 2 do not work on Windows. I have no idea why. I have the original copy of SWAT 2 present, so I'm grabbing the SWAT 2 original disc. And this laptop DVD drive is really, really weird. Because I when I shove in my original copy of SWAT 2, the DVD drive just spins and then stops. And under Windows Explorer, it does not even show that a disc is inserted. When I boot up the laptop again, it shows the inserted game in a DVD drive. But when I press auto run, it shows the pop-up menu it shows that the game should run and then it but I think it is a problem with the graphics driver. So there you have it. The only thing I wanted to play was SWAT 2 under Windows XP, which didn't work. But what did work is that I installed Windows XP on the compact M2000, which I gave another life. Internet works fine when it's cabled. So in a next video, I'll be showing you how the compact M2000 is installed with the correct driver, because I think this laptop is better in comparison to the R60 that I have for multimedia purposes. I also checked the speakers. They have a great sound, better than the R60, because the Alt Atlantic speakers. I'll see you next time guys and I'll have the laptop correctly installed.